All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, appreciate those of you that are on and on time. I uh, won't take up too much of your time today, but uh, I felt obligated to host this training um, because, you know, for, for those of you that have been working with me for a few years now, you know that a lot of my focus has been on building a business, building an agency, supporting agents, recruiting agents, training agents. So I've done a lot of trainings in the past, uh, but most recently, you know, with, you know, coronavirus and all this other jazz going on, um, you know, Joe and I have had to uh, get into the personal production arena again. And uh, I got to be honest with you guys, I'm, I'm totally digging it. Um, but I felt obligated to get on this training and, um, and, and uh, you know, go through some of my new findings to you guys. Because, you know, the game of sales is always changing, um, even in our business, especially in our business. Um, so especially, you know, with the market that we focus on, the small business owner market, uh, the sales process and the sales game has changed. It's not, um, you know, like it used to be when I was gunslinging health insurance deals back in oh, 2005 or even 2010. It's totally different now, um, you know, and you have to be able to adapt. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, uh, and, and dive in with you guys. We're going to be talking solely about the sales process. We're not going to get into products. Uh, we're not going to get into uh, uh, presentation of products specifically. We're literally just going to talk about the sales process and how to be uh, as effective as humanly possible uh, for you and your business. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Drew Ellison. Uh, I am the co-founder of Benefits Management Team. We founded BMT in 2015. And um, we've actually, as a business, we've grown every year. So, uh, you know, this year, I don't think we'll be any different. Uh, even with the coronavirus, I don't anticipate our growth uh, uh, you know, our, our history of growth being any different this year. So, uh, you know, we've got, uh, we've certainly got some expertise in the arena that we're going to be discussing today. So uh, let me go ahead and uh, dive in for you guys. First of all, I want to talk about the market that we do focus on. Okay. We focus on the small business owner market. Okay. Now, why is that? Um, you know, with the health insurance market, you've got two options, right? Ultimately, you can go with an on-exchange plan, a marketplace plan, or you can go with a plan outside of the marketplace, right? Well, where you're going to find your target market for the plans outside of the marketplace, which are the plans you make money on, right? Uh, and the people that these plans fit the best for is the small business owner market, all right? Now, we target small businesses with one to four employees, okay? And, you know, there's a method to that, okay? Reason being is 80% of small businesses make just enough money for the owner to earn a living, okay? So nine times out of 10, when we call these small businesses, we're calling the business owner directly. Uh, they're, they're, in most cases, they're doing business off their cell phone, all right? Uh, and so we, we, we can contact that business owner directly. All right. And, you know, these are, you know, these are owner operator companies. These are uh, uh, the local plumber, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, elect, you know, electrician uh, contractor, um, you know, the insurance agent, maybe the PNC insurance agent. Okay. So you guys get the point. These are owner operated uh, businesses. Okay. Just like your small business. Right. So you are, would be a customer of ours. Right. Um, most, small, most small business owners, uh, they don't qualify for subsidies, right? They make too much money, right? And, and, and they're really the market that is uh, ultimately, uh, you know, rubbed out by the Affordable Care Act, right? The Affordable Care Act, it certainly works for the people that it works for, right? And those are, you know, people that have uh, pre-existing conditions. They have to be on a marketplace plan. People that... Um, uh, people that uh, uh, have a low income, right? And, they, and, and their income is low enough, uh, you know, it's actually, it's high enough to not qualify for Medicaid, but it's still low enough for them to get subsidies through the marketplace. 
Obamacare works really well for those people. But what about that small business owner that's making 100,000, 150,000, right? They do well, right? But they don't do well enough to justify a $2,000 a month premium for their family on the marketplace, right? So most small business owners do not qualify for a subsidy, all right? Uh, most small business owners, uh, they can afford a reasonable premium, right? You know, if you're talking uh, like, you know, the deal I did last night was uh, husband and wife, um, they're in their late 40s, actually, yeah, late 40s, and uh, they're, pay they're gonna be paying 600 bucks a month for their health insurance. They can afford that reasonable premium, right? But, you know, somebody uh, working for $24,000 a year uh, in the company that doesn't offer health insurance, uh, probably can't afford that $600 a month premium, right? So again, small business owners typically can afford the reasonable premium that we put in front of them. Um, <clears throat> you get an opportunity to build long-standing relationships with small business owners, okay? Guys, persistency is the key to success in this industry. There's two types of sales models in this business, okay? The first one is churning. It's called churning. And you actually learn about it, or you should learn about it, uh, when you get licensed, okay? They talk about churning. It's actually illegal, okay? Churning is actually illegal, but, but a lot of the, um, uh, a lot of the uh, call centers, that's what they do. They have a one-track mind with one product. They have a one-size-fits-all mentality into that one product, and they pound that product on every single person that they come across. They're still using cheesy salesman techniques, okay? And the problem with that method of selling is you're always chasing the advanced dollars, okay? Your persistency is almost inevitably going to suck when you sell like that, right? Because you're not being straightforward with the customer. You probably don't even know as the agent what's really covered in the plan, right? You just want to get to the next deal and move on to the next, all right? And, um, you know, you don't have an opportunity to build relationships with your customer. Um, the first time the customer goes to use the plan and it doesn't work the way that you portrayed it to work, they're canceling it and it's an uphill battle, right? Then you're always fighting chargebacks and you're always chasing advanced dollars and it's just not nearly as effective as being the true expert broker uh, that, um, uh, you know, that, that, that we train for you to be. So, so you got an opportunity when working with small business owners to build a long-standing relationship. And I actually use this phrase a lot when I'm talking to customers. I say, listen, I want to be your guy. For as long as you have individual health insurance needs, I want to be your agent. I want to take care of you today. I want to take care of you next year. And I want to take care of you when the government inevitably changes our health insurance system yet again. All right. And what that does is, you know, again, it builds relationships, but now these people are, they trust you, right? And they're with you and they're going to stay with you. And, and because of that, as an agent, now your, real, your book of business is going to continue to grow. And the persistency in this business is how you make money. Okay. One of the main reasons that, uh, you know, BMT has continued to grow year after year is because our pers persistency is solid because we train our agents the way we train our agents, we train to be experts, okay? And to portray yourself as an expert, to, to not just follow up these, uh, the, your, you know, your sales expertise with uh, uh, you know, understanding the product, but, but with the service piece of it, all right? So important. Um, so again, small business owners is our target market. We're gonna take uh, a few minutes, we're gonna talk about leads, okay? Leads is always the big subject, right? It's, you know, uh, what, I, what I like to call insurance agents uh, that are out there bouncing from agency to agency, I call them opportunity hoppers, right? But what they're doing is they're chasing the golden leads, right? So whatever a recruiter tells them uh, is the best lead source, they're going to jump on board and 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 you know go full you know go full throttle until they realize that well maybe this lead source isn't as good as the recruiter made it sound right so let's talk about leads all right for a little bit all right 
Um, what is a lead? Let's talk about what a lead is according to in most insurance agents, okay? A lead, according to most insurance agents, is someone who is currently shopping for health insurance, somebody who's currently shopping for your product. They have a need, right? Uh, it's someone who has been qualified prior to the agent calling them. Uh, it's someone who's waiting for the agent to call them. It's someone who has committed to doing business with the agent prior to them speaking to them, all right? so. I hope you guys realize how foolish all that sounds, right? There's no lead that you're gonna call, probably ever, okay? That's going to say, uh, you know, wow, I've really been waiting for you to call me and tell me about uh, that national general plan, uh, you know, and I'm really committed to going with it, okay? There's never gonna be a lead that, that will tell you that, all right? But, but again, it's like, you know, that's what I feel like most insurance agents expect when they're calling leads, okay? They want these people to be shopping, they want them to be qualified, they want to, uh, uh, you know, they're waiting by the phone for the agent to call them, and they, you know, all but, they, they've pretty much committed to doing business with them. It's not realistic, guys, okay? So if that's what your idea of a lead is, erase that thinking from your brain instantly, okay? Because you're never gonna have success shopping for those leads. And in fact, every single time I do a sales training, I mention this and I, and I have yet to have an agent, um, uh, you know, meet the challenge. But, you know, again, guys, I've been in this business since 2005. If you find those leads, okay, if you find those leads that are currently shopping, they're qualified for our products, they're waiting for my phone call, and they're committed to doing business with me before I speak to them. If you find those leads, please call me. I will pay a premium for those leads, all right? And, uh, and, and, and I'll continue to grow my business with those leads. The truth is it just doesn't exist, okay? So what is a lead really, all right? A lead is a name and number, okay? It's a name and number, and I'm sure you've heard this and probably uh, most of yours, you know, agreeing with me that that's what a lead is. It's a name and a number. And if you're lucky, that name and the, uh, that uh, number and that name of that person buys your product. In other words, it's somebody that is responsible for purchasing their own health insurance, okay? A name and a number of somebody that buys your product, okay? Guys, when you think of it like that, you really have to understand that as insurance agents, we are truly spoiled when it comes to leads. We, we can, again, we can literally narrow down a specific market of people that buy our products and we have an place of them okay so again why would we talk about we we focus on small business owners and we target small business owners these are people that buy our products right and and there's unlimited amount of small business owners to call in this country okay so we've literally narrowed it down to the best possible target market that you could have for a specific product Right? I use this analogy a lot. Imagine if you were starting a supplement business, okay? And you felt like, you know, you were so passionate about the, the protein that you had, the fat burner that you had, um, you know, your target market would be who? People that engage in fitness, right? And buy supplements, right? And you may target the gyms or you may target, uh, you know, but imagine if you had an unlimited list of people that uh, you know you knew engaged in fitness on a regular basis, whether that's you know three times a week, five times a week, whatever. But you had a list of a bunch of people that uh, uh, you know engaged in fitness, and you can call them and, and offer your supplements, right? Well, we got the best leads in just about any industry because again, we can literally target the people that buy our products. All right, so that's a lead. Okay, a name and a number, and if you're lucky, they buy your product, okay? So let's talk about the types of leads that we work at BMT and that we provide to producing agents, okay? The key there being producing agents, all right? If you're an agent and, you know, I know I understand a lot of you, you know, may have a product uh, that you're contracted with us that is maybe just a supplement to what you do full time, 
But if you're producing with that product, we're gonna provide you with some leads, okay? The idea being, we want you to keep going and selling our products, all right? So, so the types of leads that we provide uh, to our producing agents and the, the types of leads that we work here uh, at BMT, small business owners, okay? Uh, we have no info on these small business owner lists. It's literally a database that we can pull small business owners. Uh, we can target the business size one to four. We can, we can target a specific demographic. All we have on that lead is a name and a number, and we're going in with the hope that they have a need for individual health insurance, that they buy our products, okay? That's our, that's our goal, right? Um, the next type of lead we have is telemarketed small business owners, okay? Now, a telemarketed small business owner is a lead that's generated off the exact same small business owner uh, list that, uh, you know, that we have available, but now a telemarketer contacted this small business owner first. They've gathered their name, uh, you know, obviously their phone number, they know the ages of everybody to be insured, they've qualified the lead health-wise, and, um, and they may know, you know, some more details about their, uh, their current situation as it relates to health insurance. They may know their carrier, they may know what they're uh, paying, you know, they may know their deductible, they're going to try and gather as much information as possible, okay? So a telemarketed lead is, is obviously... Uh, you know, it's a little better than a small business owner lead because they've been touched before, okay? That's, you know, one contact. We're going to talk about contacts uh, and the number of contacts that are necessary in a little bit here, all right? So that's, that's uh, another lead source we have. Um, and then we have live transfer uh, small business owners, okay? And the live transfer leads are, um, you know, we get their name, we, we get their phone number, they qualify health-wise. We know that they are the decision maker for their health insurance. And, and then if they meet all those qualifications, then they're, you know, uh, they're connected to us directly. So a live transfer lead of a small business owner is again, generated off the exact same uh, small business owner list where they're going in with nothing but the name and number. Um, you know, once they're qualified and they're ready to talk to an agent right then and there, then the transfer comes through, all right? So these are the three lead sources that we have available at BMT, okay? We're gonna talk about them uh, a little bit and, uh, and go into, uh, you know, the, the, the approach for these leads, okay? Um, it's good op good opportunity to take some notes, right? Because I don't have the scripts that I'm going to discuss right now um, uh, written out, okay? Uh, so small business owners, all right? When you're calling small business owners and all you have is a name and a phone number and you know nothing else other than the fact that the odds are good that they purchase their own health insurance, uh, you may know the type of business that they run or the name of business, the name of their business, uh, and, and, and other than that, we don't know much, right? Maybe that, we're, that they have one to four employees, okay? But that's about the extent of it, all right? So when you're calling these leads, that's about as cold of a call as you're gonna make, right? That's a, it's a cold call, right? You're calling them cold, right? And, you know, you really have to, uh, this is the, you know, you have one opportunity uh, to earn their business, one shot. Okay, and we're going to talk about it in a couple more slides here, uh, what it takes in order to earn their business. But um, guys, you have to, you, you know, repetition is, is uh, what's going to get you uh, uh, in a position to be effective. Okay, so, so practice makes perfect, right? If you're calling these small business owners and you're, you're you know, you're fearful of rejection, you're, you know, you lack confidence, uh, you know, you think that, uh, you know, you don't know the product and that's making you scared, whatever the reason may be, uh, you're probably not going to be as effective as the guy that's touching these small business owners with all the confidence in the world and is, you know, reaching out to them to help them, right? 
So when you're calling a small business owner, the, the one, the, the, the script that I like the most sounds like this, okay? You have, you, you literally have about 12 seconds to tell them who you are and why you're calling, okay? So, you know, first of all, you don't want to ask for the business owner, okay? Hi, is Mr. Jones there? Okay? That gives them an out. You could be talking to Mr. Jones already, all right? And, and uh, you know, they're going to they're, they're gonna give, you know, you, you, gotta, you just gave them an out. They have an opportunity to object. No, Mr. Jones isn't here. Click, right? So you want to assume that the business owner is the person answering the phone, right? So, you know, hi, hi Mr. Jones. Uh, this is Drew with Benefits Management Team. Uh, I'm an expert health insurance agent. Uh, I wanted to reach out to you to see if there's an opportunity to earn your business. Is your zip code, you know, 3001, right? You, you may have their zip code. You may have the name of their business. You may have, uh, uh, you know, but you want to verify some piece of information that you have, all right, and get them engaged, okay? Now, guys, this is a numbers game, just like anything else, but even more so with this. Then this is a numbers game, right? And, and and I don't think I'm talking to any sales rookies here. You understand that, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta dial, you know, it's a, it, the more numbers you dial, the more contacts you're gonna make, the more uh, opportunities, you know, to sell you're gonna generate. All right. But if you're calling and you know, you you're reaching out to these people and you literally, you know, you're stumbling over your words or you just sound uh, you know, you, you sound like you dread your job, you sound unconfident, they're not going to give you the time of day, all right? You have 12 seconds to tell them who you are and why you're calling and what you can do for them, okay? Hey, my name's Drew with BMT. I'm an expert health insurance agent. I'm reaching out to see if there's an opportunity to earn your business. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're in a position to literally uh, provide small business owners with the best health insurance option for them. Now you're the owner of the business, correct? Right? Verify some piece of information that uh, that you have. Okay. Verify some piece, whether it's the zip code, whether it's you know the, the fact that they own the business, whether it's the name of the company. I don't care. Verify some piece of information and get a yes answer. Okay. Get them to say yes, that's correct. All right. Once you have them, then now they're engaged. Okay. Now you can move on to the next steps of qualifying them and, um, and going deeper in. We'll get to that, all right? But this is a numbers game. This is a contact game when you're calling small business owners, okay? Uh, telemarketed leads. Now, telemarketed leads have been contacted before. They've been contacted by the, uh, by the telemarketer. The telemarketer has qualified them. That's what's you know, allowed them to put the lead through. And now you're following up, okay? So it really is, it becomes a follow-up call, okay? Hey, Mr. Jones, this is Drew with Benefits Management Team. Uh, you spoke to one of my reps recently regarding a health insurance quote. I'm following up to get that to you. Is your zip code 30008, right? And, and you know, the key is to not pause between your introduction and going into your qualification, okay? No pause. All right, because when you pause, you give them an out, right? Hey, this is Drew with BMT. You spoke to a rep of mine last week about getting a health insurance quote. I'm following up to get that to you. And then I pause, right? Right there, they're thinking, you know, as soon as they hear you talking, they're already thinking of their objection. So when you pause, they've already got their objection thought out. They're ready to go, right? Oh, I, I, uh, this guy's got, oh God, I don't have the time. Now you pause. Yeah, I really don't have the time, man. All right? Or no, I don't remember speaking to him. I'm not interested. Or yeah, I did talk to him, but I'm not interested anymore. Right? That pause is going to lead you uh, to miss opportunities. Okay? So no pause. No pause from the introduction into verifying even one piece of information that's going to get you a yes answer. Okay? Hey, this is Drew with BMT. You spoke to a rep of mine last week regarding a health insurance quote. I'm following up to get that to you. Is your zip code 60008? Yes, it is. Great. Now I just keep going. I got that you're 40 years old. Your wife's 40 years old. You've got two kids for the plan, correct? And you just keep going, right? Now I'm already into qualifying them. So no pause. It's one of the biggest mistakes that I see agents make, all right? Whether you know, they're, they're, you know, they're in the office or they're working from home, 
and I say, hey, give me your pitch, it always is, you know, there's a pause. They introduce themselves, tell them why they're calling, and they pause, and right there, you're giving everybody an out, and they're gonna take it. Okay, small business owners will take the out, all right? Live transfers, live transfers are self-explanatory, they're easy, right? They've already been qualified by a, uh, by a screener, and, and they're being transferred to us, all right? So when you get a live transfer on the phone, that's actually why I was uh, two minutes late for this training. I was taking a live transfer. Um, you know, you got their name, their number, and they've met the qualifications to be transferred. Uh, you go right into it. Hey, how you doing? My name is Drew. Great, nice to meet you. Your zip code, uh, let me get your zip code. Let me get your birthday, okay? And the point I'm making with this, you know, going right into it, guys, uh, you know, don't build rapport, okay? Agents want to build rapport. It's not time to build rapport. There's plenty of time for rapport, all right? When, when you know, most people, uh, there's a saying uh, or a joke, I guess, how do you get a salesman to stop working? You put a phone in front of them, right? And, you know, it's, it's just the truth, right? You know, it, for whatever reason, salespeople hate making phone calls. Even though the money is on the other end of the phone, they hate making phone calls, all right? You can't hate making phone calls if your job is sales, okay? Um, <clears throat> you know, but, but you gotta understand that when you call somebody, the odds are good that you're interrupting their day, okay? And I think that's what is, uh, you know, makes a lot of agents fearful is they don't wanna interrupt anybody's day. You know, they just wanna, you know, oh, they, whatever excuse, oh, I'm not gonna call this guy now because it's lunch, they're probably eating. Well, who cares? Call them, right? You got to be comfortable with interrupting somebody's day, right? So when you are interrupting somebody's day, it's not the time to build rapport, okay? It's time to get down to business. All right, so let's go into the sales process now. All right, guys. The, you know, especially with small business owners, okay, the one call close days on the small business owners uh, are over, okay? You're not gonna close a small business owner on the first call, most of the time, right? Even the live transfers, okay? Even the live transfers, we're finding that it takes multiple contacts to close. Small business owners uh, are typically a little bit more thorough, especially with their family's health insurance, than maybe just a consumer who's gonna, you know, try and find the cheapest price, right? Most of the time, small business owners, again, because they can afford a reasonable premium, uh, they are, uh, you know, they're, they're more thorough. They're buying on value. They're not buying on price, okay? So the first call, okay, the first contact that you make is a qualifying call, okay? Your goal is, number one, to gather as much information as possible. Well, first of all, you know the information that you need in order to run a quote. You need the zip code. You need the ages. You need to know whether or not they smoke. You need to know their health status, right? And by health status, I basically mean that they can't have any major pre-existing conditions, right? No cancer, heart attack, stroke, uh, insulin, diabetes, right? You can't help those people right now. Those people need a marketplace plan right? Now, there's some guaranteed issue policies out there, but I don't want to do my customers a disservice by giving them a guaranteed issue policy that's never even going to cover their pre-existing condition, right? Even guaranteed issue policies don't cover pre-existing conditions, right? Um, now, as a last resort, yeah, it's still better than nothing, but, you know, in most cases, uh, you can get these people set up with a marketplace plan. Um, <clears throat> so, you need the health status, right? But any more, any information beyond zip code, age, tobacco, health status uh, is all good information to have. And when you have somebody giving you that information, ask for more information. Who's your current carrier? What's your premium? Do you know what your deductible is or co-pays? Anything you can tell me about your current policy would help me out, right? Do you have a doctor that you want to make sure accepts the plan that we quote out for you? Uh, what's the closest hospital to you that you would go to in the event of an emergency, okay? Getting all this information up front is only going to increase your chances to close the deal on the back end, right? 
So gather as much information as possible, all right? Now, once you've gathered all that information, okay, um, you know, the goal then is to set the follow-up appointment, okay? Get a hard time, get a hard appointment set. And this is, this. so if the first biggest mistake that I see agents making, it's literally something as simple as that pause in between the intro and going into the qualification. The second biggest mistake I see agents making when they do have an opportunity to quote a customer and an opportunity to earn their business, they don't set an appointment to follow up with them. They say, okay, Mr. Jones, I'm gonna send you the quote and I'll call you tomorrow. I'm gonna send you the quote and I'll call you next week. Okay, what are you doing with that? You're giving them an out. Yeah, okay, yeah, call me next week. I won't answer when you call. Or yeah, call me tomorrow. I won't answer when you call, right? You're giving them an out. Okay, it's the, one of the biggest mistakes I see agents making today. You have to book the follow-up appointment. You have to get an exact time. You have to get a commitment from the customer to talk about this health insurance plan. Now, if they don't set an appointment with you and they don't commit to that appointment, they're not a real buyer. You don't have a buyer. Okay, they're just being nice to you, letting you go through the process so they can blow you off later. All right, the buyers will set an appointment. The people that are serious about saving money, obtaining coverage, okay, these people will set an appointment with you. And the appointment could be for an hour later. It could be for, you know, that same day. You know, most of the time it's gonna be a day or two out right? You don't want to go much further than a couple of days out, okay? But you got to set the appointment. Now, I'll tell you, you know, and, it, and, it, and, it's, and it works, it's the exact same way that, uh, it works the exact same way that sales always has when, you know, insurance salesmen, when there was no such thing as virtual sales, and it was all face-to-face, -face, in the home, right? What, what, how, what was the sales process then? call a customer, right? And set the appointment, right? And then go out and see them. And for, you know, a lot of you who are closers, you knew that going into that appointment, uh, you know, the odds were good. If you got in the door, you were walking out with a deal, right? Well, it's the same exact principle on the virtual side. When I call a customer at an appointment time and they answer, the odds are good, I'm closing the deal, all right? Because they know why I'm calling. I'm calling to talk about health insurance. I'm talking to go over the quote that I sent them. And if they like what I have to offer, they know that I'm gonna be asking for the sale, okay? So on the first call, all right, on the very first contact, Okay, and, the, and by the time you talk to them, it might be the second contact, right? If it's a telemarketing lead or a, uh, or a live transfer, then you are the second contact, all right? But if you're calling small business owners cold, on the very first call, your only goal should be to gather as much information as possible, okay? Book the follow-up appointment, all right? and then you would prepare the quote and send it out from the carrier site, okay? All the carriers now have, you know, beautiful technology that allows you to prepare a nice proposal, send it out to them directly from the site, send the quote from the carrier site. You can't put together a better looking quote than they can, okay? Send the quote from the carrier site. And some agents, uh, you know, got their, you know, they have their own email drawn up and they attach brochures and they send the quote, you know, here's your quote, Mr. Jones, this is the price, it covers blah, 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 I've attached the brochure. You know, it, it's not, it doesn't look as clean and as professional as the quote coming directly from the carrier site, okay? So the objective in the first call, qualify them, okay? Make sure you have a buyer, right? If you're qualifying them and they say, oh, I, I'm in remission, I just got through cancer two years ago, well, you don't have a buyer right now, right? You may have a buyer during open enrollment, but you certainly can't sell them a NatGen plan or a Philly plan or a UHC plan, 
can't sell them any of our products. We gotta do, we gotta talk marketplace, right? So gather as much information as possible, qualify them and make sure that you have a buyer or, or somebody that you can sell to, somebody that's insurable and book the follow-up appointment. I know I'm stressing this, but this is the, this is the key. This is the difference, okay? This is the difference between having a stack of people that you've quoted and just following up, following up, following up, following up, and never getting a hold of anybody and never presenting to anybody to having five, six, you know, 10, 12, however many appointments per week and actually sitting down and presenting to people. Okay. If you guys want to sell on value, you want to build relationships, you want to, you want to uh, build a strong book of business that will pay you for years and years and years to come, you got to sell like this, All right? Being fast talking and going for the deal on the first call, maybe you get it, maybe sometimes you'll get it, okay? But you're not going to have a relationship with that person. And if they don't understand the policy, if you didn't go over it thoroughly enough with them, this, the, the second they use it and it doesn't work the way they thought it worked, they're calling me, the next phone call they make is to the insurance company to cancel. So book the appointment, so important, all right? To book the appointment. All right, so now the process, okay? We, 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 we qualified the, the customer, okay? We're still in the sales process. We've qualified the customer. Uh, we know that we have somebody that's insurable, right? Uh, we've booked the follow-up appointment. Okay, so we've made one or possibly two contacts with the customer at that point. How many contacts uh, does it make, does it take to make a sale, right? Some of you have heard seven, others 12, right? Others, you know, I've, I'm hearing 24 nowadays, okay? Let's just all agree that it takes multiple contacts to make a sale. Right, it takes multiple contacts to make a sale. So when when you know when you touch them on the first call, that's contact number one. Okay, you've prepared the quote for them, and you've sent it to them from your portal. Send them one quote too. Don't send them three carrier quotes. All you're gonna do is confuse them. Send them one quote, one product that you feel like is the best option for them. Okay. You're gonna have, if you book the follow-up appointment the right way, then you're gonna have the opportunity to explain yourself and, and to build your case as to why you feel like that's the best product for them. So send them one quote. You can always shift, right? All of us work with multiple carriers, right? So we can always shift, but send them one quote, okay? So you've made the initial phone conversation, the initial contact, okay? Maybe it was, again, the second contact, depending on the lead source. Then you send them the quote. That's they're seeing your name again. That counts as a contact. That's two contacts. You book the appointment on the calendar. Okay, Google Calendar. That's what I use. It's real easy. I put their email address in the Google Calendar and I invite them to the meeting. So now they're getting an email with a Google Calendar invite. That's another contact, right? So before I ran the appointment. Um, you know, I've made several contacts. I contacted them by phone. I contacted them with a quote. I'm contacting them with an appointment. I'm always looking for my business owners on LinkedIn and trying to connect with them on LinkedIn. If that's successful, then I contact them. That's another contact on LinkedIn. Right? Every single time they see your name, it counts as a contact. Okay. So you wanna put your name in front of them as many times as possible. Get the contacts out of the way. All right, a contact doesn't necessarily need to be a phone call. A contact could be a text, all right? A contact could be an email. A contact could be a connection request on LinkedIn or Facebook, okay? Whatever your social media platform of choice is, all right? On the day of the appointment or the day before the appointment, you're gonna contact them again by confirming the appointment. Send them a text, confirming our appointment for 10 a.m. tomorrow. Talk to you then. Send them the same email, confirming our appointment 
for 10 a.m. tomorrow. Talk to you then. If they're if they have a Google calendar and they've said and they've said yes to the to the um, to the email that they get, right? If they've said yes to the appointment, then Google's gonna contact them for you. Oh, quick reminder, your appointment is coming up. So you could literally have six, seven, eight contacts in the books with only having one conversation and booking a follow-up appointment. By the time you get to the follow-up appointment, you could have eight contacts in the books. And what I've found people tend to do is when you, when you connect with them on Facebook or you connect with them on LinkedIn or, or any of the other social media things, they go to check you out. Okay, they'll check you out and see, okay, uh, let's see if this guy's the real deal. That's a good thing, right? That's a good thing. That means they're, they're thinking about doing business with you already. Want to make sure the guy I'm doing business with is legit, all right? So when you set the appointment and send them the quote, book them on the calendar, invite them to the appointment, connect with them on LinkedIn, send them a text to follow up. You may even want to send them a text immediately after you send them a quote. Hey, just sent you the quote. And, you know, again, I wanted to thank you for your time today. I'll talk to you, you know, at said date when we have the appointment. That's another contact. Those contacts are easy to make, okay? But don't go from, you know, the initial phone call to the appointment and have the appointment be the second contact because you miss a huge opportunity in between to contact them numerous times. And guys, you should, the truth is, if the numbers are the numbers and whatever the numbers are, right? There is a number, there is a right number, there is an average number that is correct. Whether it's eight contacts, 10 contacts, who knows? But it's certainly probably somewhere in that ballpark if I had to guess. Probably eight to 12 if I had to guess, right? So why as salespeople are we not sprinting to get these number of contacts in as quickly as possible so we can get to the fun part, which is closing the deal, right? So make as many contacts as possible. Okay, now you're at the appointment. Okay, you're at the appointment. When, when I book the appointments with these people, all right, I'll say, Mr. Jones, uh, you know, all right, I got all the information I need. I'm gonna go to work for you. I'm gonna find the plan that I think best fits your needs. I'm gonna go ahead and send you an email with that plan. Um, we've got an appointment to go over that plan at 10 a.m. on Friday. Now, Mr. Jones, the, what I'd like you to do is I'd like for you to be in front of a computer at that time, okay? I'd like you to be in front of a computer or your laptop or, uh, you know, I've done screen shares on people's phones, okay? Oh, you're not in front of a computer? Well, go ahead and, and uh, get on this screen share, you know, get on this meeting on your phone and, uh, and I'll share my screen with you on your phone, okay? A computer works better, computer, laptop, right? Best options, but worst case scenario, everybody's got a little computer in their pocket today, right? So whenever possible, you wanna do a screen share with people, okay? Because it puts you in control. Now you can show them the highlights of the plan that you want them to see. Uh, it, you know, you want to have your camera on whenever possible so they can see you, right? Now you become, a, you know, you're real, right? You're building, you know, that, that's building rapport right there, all right? And, and you're, you're, you're solidifying your role as an expert, which you always want to be doing along the way, all right? So you want to book the appointment and, and stress to the customer, you know, the best way this works is for you to be in front of a computer at that time, and I'll do a screen share with you. Now, you know, guys, you guys are entrepreneurs, right? So some of these logistics you have to work out for yourself. You know, I use Zoom, all right? We're using Zoom right now. I use Zoom with my customers, my prospects. Okay, I just create a Zoom meeting, and I invite them, and I use Zoom. But you can use Join Me. Uh, you could use, uh, you know, Google, I think, has an option now uh, to, to do a screen share. Uh, I think I saw, you know, a, a video conference or something that Google has an option to do. So these are the little things that you need to work out as an entrepreneur. What's going to be your go-to? 
but there's certainly no shortage of technologies out there that will allow you to do a screen share, right? And if you're not willing to learn one, then you're shooting yourself in the foot because it's 2020. And in case you haven't noticed, uh, you know, we're being pushed into a virtual, uh, you know, we're being pushed into a virtual uh, society. All right, so you better be able to adapt if you want to succeed. All right. So you do a screen share whenever possible. All right. Now, once you've got them, guys, that that's that's really uh, you know what you should be spending your time doing throughout the day when you're prospecting. You should be spending your time, uh, you know, qualifying and setting appointments. Okay. If you come into the day and you have no appointments, what are the odds you're going to sell something? Okay. Probably slim. Okay. Very few people are going to pick up the phone and call you. I've been in this business for 15 years. Uh, I do more marketing on social media than most agents. And, and I know I could even up that. I could even, I could even up my game in that arena. And that's something that I'm always working on doing. Um, but guys, even with the amount of marketing that I do, my phone's not ringing off the hook. So I guarantee you, your phone's not ringing off the hook for prospects. Okay. You got to call them. You got to get on the phone. And, and, and if you have no appointments for the day, you shouldn't be spending your time focused on getting the sale. You should be spending your time qualifying the buyers, finding the buyers, and setting the follow-up appointment to close the buyers. Okay? So now you've got them at, you've, now you've got the appointment with them. Okay, you're doing the screen share. Now, now it's your chance. Now's your chance. Okay, but that's that's really 75% of the sales process. Because when you get somebody to the appointment, right? You get somebody on a screen share and they are to, an, to the appointment, 75% of the sales process is done. Now it's just a matter of presenting, building your case as to why you uh, chose the plan that you chose, okay? And closing the deal. I like to sell Philly. I like Philly American. Okay, I've written 28,000 this week worth of Philadelphia American business. I like that product. I like the fact that it's permanent. I like the fact that it's the best limited medical on the market. And I, you know, there's catastrophic riders that I could put on top. Okay, I literally uh, build my case as to why I like Philadelphia American and the fact that, you know, uh, we're heading in a world of transparency pricing. Nothing's going to mirror better with uh, benef you know, transparency pricing than transparent benefits. You know, uh, a, you know, I tell my customers, a good insurance agent will tell you how much coverage you have, uh, but a great insurance agent will tell you exactly how much your cost is going to be for specific services. All right? And I, you know, I tell them, I build my case all the way through. All right? I go over the plan details. And I continually stress, right, that, listen, Mr. Jones, I want you to understand, this is not the last time we're going to talk, all right? I want you to call me if you need to get an MRI, because, again, I have access to free market pricing, and I can go and shop for the lowest-costing MRI on the market. I get people MRIs for $250, colonoscopies for $1,100, lab work for $65, all right. This is all a part. This is all part of my pitch, guys. What I'm telling you right now. It's part of me building my case. All right. And always stress that you are an expert. Okay. You're an expert. You're not going to be, you know, there's so many age of guys. We have a big problem in our industry. Okay. The problem is, uh, you know, uh, turnover, just like any other sales business right? But there's so many people out there that have purchased their health insurance from an agent that simply doesn't exist anymore, from our agency included, okay? So many people do not have a health insurance agent that they can call to ask even the simplest of questions. So guys, what I've found in the last few weeks of being on the phones and uh, you know, in the last four weeks, 
Uh, I've written uh, almost 70,000, just shy of 70,000 in premium in the last four weeks and um, you know, annual premium. And what I've found is more so than ever before, people are not buying plans, they're buying people, they're buying service. So it's so important for you to stress to people that you are an expert, that you are playing the long game, that you're gonna be in this business for, for years to come, and you wanna be their health insurance guy, okay? And people will bite, they, like, they love that, they need that, okay? Okay, still on the sales process. Okay, guys, once you've gone over the benefits of the plan, right? Remember, 75% of the work is getting them, to the, getting them to the appointment. Once you've got them to the appointment, you know, if you have any sales ability, the deal is done, right? Your closing percentage is going to be just as good as it ever was in a face-to-face -face opportunity over the phone, okay? I don't even ask for the sale. I mean, I do ask for the sale, but, but, but it's almost like they, they're, they're like, well, I'm sold. I can't even tell you how many times people go, well, I'm sold. What do we got to do next, right? Asking for the sale will become easy once you have them to that point. Remember, you've already qualified them. You've made several contacts. You've gotten them to that appointment. And, and in that appointment, you've built your case as to why you're presenting the plan that you're presenting, right? And you've, and you've continued to stress along the way that you are the guy they need to be doing business with, that you're the guy that, or the girl, you're the, you're the, you're the agent that they need to be working with, right? So close them, close them up, ask for the sale, all right? What I recommend is we go ahead and put the application in and see if we can get you approved. How hard is that? It ain't, okay? You, can, you may have to overcome some objections, okay? Now, over, overcoming objections, when the customer is sitting at the table with you or they're sitting on the other end of the computer with you, they've committed to the appointment and they're at that point. Objections at that point, guys, are minimal. They're minimal. And what I've found is at that point, when people object, they're really giving you the true objection. All right, last night, uh, I, 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 I did a deal for, again, husband and wife. Um, you know, their objection was that, uh, uh, you know, they, on their current plan, they get, un, you know, they get free wellness, right? They get free wellness. And, you know, there's a 60-day waiting period on the wellness benefit on the plan that I was selling them. I sold them Philly. You get a $250 wellness benefit. There's a 60-day wait on it. Right now, they get free wellness. Well, I also saved them $400 a month. So it wasn't a matter of whether or not they were going to go with me. It was just a matter of them saying, well, maybe we should go get our physical first before we go on this plan. I said, you know what? Not a bad idea at all. Let's set an effective date for September 1st because you've got to be underwritten and all that other jazz anyway. So let's do a, a September 1st effective date. You've got time to go get your uh, physical on your plan where it's free. We've got time to get the policy underwritten and, and the, it was a done deal, okay? But if an agent didn't know to do that, maybe they would have let that go and said to themselves, oh yeah, go ahead and get your physical. I'll call you in a couple weeks and we'll do the deal that then. Well, anything can happen in a couple weeks and where the deal doesn't get done, right? But overcoming objections should be minimal when you get them to that point, okay? The other objections you're going to get are on the upfront, right? When you're, when, you're, when you're working to set the appointment with them, okay? And at that time, it's... Come on, get, get up for the hell. Hang on a second. I got to mute somebody, okay. Um, you know, at that point, when you're getting objections to do the appointment, okay, maybe you don't have a real buyer, okay? Maybe it's somebody that's not serious about looking at your products, you know, and you're gonna come across that. You're gonna come across people that are gonna give you all kinds of objections. 
you know, but by the time you get them in front of a computer screen and you're going over the, the product with them and you're stressing along the way that you are an expert and, and that you're going to be there for their needs, there's very few objections that you're going to find. Okay. Because again, they're, they're, they're serious. They do the, they get to the appointment with you. They're serious. Okay. Uh, and, and again, always be building value all the way through. Okay. All the way through, you want to build value. Okay. Check the network for their doctors and closest hospitals. Okay. Explain to them the problem in our industry as it relates to prescription drugs. Okay. Build value all the way through. All right. Uh, a couple of keys to success, guys. Uh, I think I mentioned it a little early on. Uh, one, you got to be confident. Okay. Nobody, nobody, I don't care who you are, uh, is going to do well in this business if you lack confidence. Okay. So you got to be confident. You got to be confident in your your uh, person uh, personality. You got to be confident in your sales ability. You got to be confident. Okay. You got to be professional. All right. Um, don't worry about building rapport. We talked about that. Guys, I have some of the best rapport. I would even call some of my customers friends, okay? I have great rapport with a lot of my customers. Great rapport. But I didn't build that rapport until they became my customers, right? What do I need to build rapport with somebody if they're not willing to do a deal with me? Right? I don't care who their favorite football team is or what the weather's like where they are. I don't care. I want to do business with them. And I'm direct. Speak clearly and get to the point. Be direct. Okay? Guys, when I was uh, a, a sales manager back in 06, um, my mentor in this business, he used to, you know, every, you know, he would grace us with his presence sometimes. And he would, uh, he would host sales meetings and he would talk about, uh, you know, the industry and the passion that he had was like, you know, he, 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 was, he was, I was thinking to myself back then, I remember thinking it, I remember thinking, man, I could never say those things. Like, man, how do I, you know, how do I get passionate, right? What I was focused on uh, back then was deductible, co-pays, price. Right. Those were my, you know, that was, I was like, just, you know, justifying, uh, you know, why people should do business with me because I can get them a better price. I can get them a lower deductible. I can get them co-pays on their plan, whatever. Right. That was, that was how I sold. Right. But I wasn't, I wasn't nearly, you know, I was never passionate about uh, health insurance or, uh, my expertise in this business or medical billing. Obviously, it's a lot different today, okay? But I'm telling you guys, it's like, it's night and day, uh, you know, when, uh, you know, as far as your production goes, when you can portray some of that passion and speak clearly and get to the point, all right? Back when I was, uh, uh, you know, a 24-year-old kid, I would have never told somebody, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Jones, I'm looking for an opportunity to earn your business. Uh, you know, you know, I, I feel like, you know, I, I'm one of the best agents that you could work with. I would have never said that as, as a part of my pitch back then. You know, nowadays, I, I, you know, I'm straight to the point. I speak clearly. I get right to the point. You know, I'll tell them, hey, Mr. Jones, I want you to understand I'm trying to earn your business. You know, if there's an opportunity here for me to help you, that's what I want to do. I want to make sure that you understand your, your benefits, right? And sometimes they're a little stand up, right? They start the conversation like the wall is up and they're a little standoffish with me. And when I just, you know, speak right to them, straight, get straight to the point, hey, there's no, you know, there's no question I want to earn your business, right? I, don't you think it's a problem, Mr. Jones, that you don't know who your insurance is through or what's covered? Don't you think that's an issue? Well, that's the fault of your previous agent. You don't know that information because the agent never went over it with you. Okay. What I want to do is make sure you understand what I'm talking about. And it's not just about price. Let's get an appointment on the schedule so we can talk about it. Okay. Be direct guys. People, people really appreciate that. Okay. 
the, the, the cheesy salesmanship of the 90s and even the early 2000s, that is dead. It's totally dead. All right. It's been dead for a while. It's even more dead now. All right. People want to work with professionals. And I love it when, when somebody tries to educate me on health insurance. I love it. You know, like, uh, uh, you know, I, like this wildlife rescue guy, you know, uh, tried to educate me on health insurance, you know, what the best option for him was. And, and he was totally wrong, right? I said, listen, man, I said, you know, would you listen to my advice about capturing wildlife? Would you take my expertise on capture, capturing wildlife? No, which is why your advice to me about health insurance is totally wrong, okay? I'm the guy that needs to be consulting you. You don't need to tell me. You wanna talk to me about wildlife? Cool, teach me something. But when it comes to health insurance, you don't know better than I do. And you guys have to have that mentality when you're talking to people, all right? It'll go a long way. All right, some of the meat and potatoes here. All right, let's talk numbers. Four keys to success. For a full-time agent, you need to run five new quotes a day. Now, if you run five new quotes, that's five people that you're gonna ask for appointments for, right? Are all five of them gonna set the appointment? No, but you'll set three of them. Now, how do you get five quotes out? What do you do? Right? Well, you got to know your business. You got to know your business's numbers in order to achieve that mark. Okay. For example, you need to make a hundred dial. You know, I need to make 100 calls in a day in order to run five quotes. If I know that about myself, then a hundred dials is what I have to do on a daily basis. Okay. You got to know that for yourself. Maybe you have a lot of talent, right? You're, you're, you're very talented as a salesman, right? or a salesperson, then you, you know, say, well, I can make 30 calls in a day and I'll get my five quotes out. Okay, but if you wanna make full-time money in this business, you need five quotes out a day. That's 25 quotes a week in a five-day work week. That's 100 quotes a month. That's 1,200 quotes a year. Okay, if you close 10% of the people you run quotes for, it's 120 new customers a year. You sell an average of three policies per customer, all right, 360 policies, you're making six figures. If you have a high level of talent, you're gonna close better than 10%, okay? But you have to know your numbers for your business. But five quotes should be the standard. Now, if you're, if you're a, um, a part-time agent, you know, two quotes a day one quote a day, whatever, do the numbers for yourself. However much money you wanna make, however much money you wanna earn. But I will tell you this, I don't know of an agent in this business that works full-time hours that doesn't make full-time money. Now, full-time money can be a wide range of income, right? For some people, full-time money is 25,000 a year. For others, it's 250, all right? But if you work full-time, you'll make full-time money. If you work part-time, you're probably gonna make part-time money, unless you're highly talented, right? Then you can work part-time and make full-time money. You can work part-time in this business and make 50 grand if you got a lot of talent, okay? You should have two to three solid appointments per day, 10 to 15 solid appointments per week. Now again, do the numbers. If you have 10 to 15 solid appointments per week, how many appointments do you think you're going to present to? It's not going to be 10 to 15 because you're going to have no shows. It's a lot easier for people to blow off uh, virtual appointments than it is for them to blow off uh, in-home appointments, right? So if you have 10 to 15 appointments per week, you're probably going to present to 6 to 11, 6 to 10, 6 to 12, 6 to 12 presentations a week. And you should close, you know, again, know your numbers. I'll close 85, 90% of the appointments that I have. Okay, so if I have six to 12 appointments per week, I'm gonna write 
five to 10 deals, five to 10 new customers a week. Okay, the fortune is in the follow-up. It's a big key to this, all right? It's gonna be a lot of people that you run quotes for that you don't get on a, on a, a set appointment for, or a lot of people that blow off your appointment. Uh, those are still the best leads that you could ever call. The best leads I have today are this stack of people that I have quoted. These are the best leads I've got. I've already talked to them. I've already quoted them. Those are the best leads you're ever gonna have, the people that you've already talked to. Okay, so I, it blows my mind how many agents will run a quote, right? They maybe do everything perfect. Run a quote, uh, qualify them, uh, you know, follow, you know, set the follow-up appointment, and then they blow them off on the follow-up appointment, and they never call that person again because they just assume, oh, they didn't want to talk to me for the appointment. They're never going to want to talk to me again. And that is totally wrong, totally false. Okay. The fortune is in the follow-up. This is about timing, more so than any other business. This is about timing. You know, I've used this analogy before. I'm, I'm almost certain that somebody on this call has heard me use this analogy, but I'm gonna use it again, okay? You know, we have a market of roughly 40, 50 million people. Some experts say it's, you know, double those numbers, okay? So we have roughly 40, 50 million people. We are in, you know, health insurance is, uh, the, the landscape of the health insurance industry is set up for people to review their benefits on an annual basis, okay? So if there, we know there's 40, 50 million people out there that are gonna be reviewing their health insurance benefits, okay? I mean, it's literally, it's like, it's like fishing with dynamite, guys. You just gotta do the work. You're not gonna have a hard time finding people to help, especially since if you find three of them a week, you're making six figures, okay? But if you, you know, uh, you know, back to the analogy, you know, if you sold cars, right? And I handed you a list of 40 million people and I said, this, for, this list of 40 million people are going to review their auto situation this year at some point. At some point this year, they are going to shop for a new car. What would you do to that list? You would call it, you would email it, you would text it, you would, you would be in those people's faces to make sure that when the time came for them to test drive cars, that you would be one of the people that they go and test drive cars from. Same thing here, that's called marketing. Just because you call a lead today and they're not a buyer today, doesn't mean they're not a buyer in the fourth quarter. All right, the fortune is in the follow-up. If you have, uh, maybe you've been doing this for several years and you should go back and call every single lead that you have ever talked to. Hey, this is Drew with BMT. You know, I talked to you a couple years ago. Uh, must not have been the right time to help you out, but I wanted to see if there was an opportunity to earn your business again. No, you're not ready? Okay, well, I'll call you in the fourth quarter. Let me send you an email with my contact information so you have it, all right? The fortune is in the follow-up. Spend most of your time on the money-making activity, guys. Don't mistake motion for progress. You know, back to, the, back to the old joke, how do you get a salesman to stop working? Put a phone in front of them, okay? Listen. Building websites, um, uh, building social media pages, um, you know, walking and talking. I mean, you know, that's actually a better one. Um, but, you know, reorganizing your desk, reading a brochure, getting contracted with the, with the 50th carrier. How is that going to make you money? It's not, I mean, I'll give you the answer. It's not, it's not going to make you money, all right? You have to spend the majority of your time on the exact activity that most agents dread. Getting on the phones, 
talking to people, finding people to close. All right? Worry about your website and your social media accounts later. During business hours, you need to find somebody to close. And that person is on the other end of the phone. Okay? Doing research and trying to find the agency that's going to tell you they have the best leads. Guys, I, let me just be as clear as I can with that. It is all bullshit. Okay? Excuse my language, but that's exactly what it is. Okay? Agency says, we have the best leads. Leads come to you. Okay? You still have to qualify them. You still have to quote them. You still have to close them. Right? You still have to be on the phone to do all that. There is no such thing as the magic lead source. Absolutely none. Oh, per, per. oh my God. <laughs> Um, all right, guys, so don't mistake motion for progress, all right? Get to work on money-making activities. All the other marketing strategies are secondary, okay? Uh, know the following. Uh, if you don't, you've already lost. Becoming an expert in this game takes time. You can write big numbers and still not be an ex expert. Be committed to always learning. Uh, guys, I've been in this business for 15 years now, all right? Do I consider myself an expert at this point? Yes, I do, okay? For a long time, I did not. I just relied on my sales ability, okay, to close deals, all right? Just because you can close some deals doesn't mean you're an expert in this business, okay? Understand that it takes time to become an expert. Play the long game, all right? Don't have unrealistic expectations. Can you make six figures in, their, in your first year? Of course you can, okay? But to maintain that and to continuously do better and to continuously build, you gotta keep coming to the table year in and year out, okay? It's not gonna be a business where you're gonna knock it out of the water your first year, knock it out of the park your first year, and then your second year you take your foot off the gas and that money's just gonna be there. You gotta play the long game, all right? I will tell you guys this, success in this business is unlike success in almost any other business. This, this success in this business is the type of success that people strive for, all right? And why is that, okay? The only reason that we're not out of business because during this pandemic is because of the work that we've done for the pre, in the previous years, right? Our renewals got us through, are continuing to get us through. Right? And same thing will work, you know, same thing will hold true for you guys. And I say this to people like, you know, the, the one thing about success in this business is literally take it in direction you want. Okay. The only reason I still work today as hard as I work is because, uh, you know, my goals are that big. Okay. I, I've got big goals in this industry. All right, but uh, you know, if my goal was to make a couple hundred thousand dollars a year and coach little league and and work out for two hours a day and go fishing once or twice a week, I could easily do that at this point. So if that's your goal, if that's what you want, you know, you got a couple of years of grinding it out, working hard, and then you can get to that point where you maintain. All right, so success in this industry looks completely different for everybody. All right, know where you're heading, okay? And be relentless in your pursuit. So understand where, you're, where you wanna go. Do you wanna make six figures and be able to work part-time? You can get there, but it's not gonna happen your first year, probably not your second, okay? By your third year, if you do it right, you could, you could achieve that, okay? Do you want to build a massive agency and build a business and, and, and become an industry disruptor? You can do that. Be relentless in your pursuit, but have a goal, all right? And if you're playing the long game, 
You have to understand that it's, it's, it's every single day. It requires showing up every single day to achieve that, all right? My goal has been to uh, develop a private label product for quite some time. And uh, it looks like uh, we're, gonna, we're, we're this close to having our own BMT product. It's only an $8 a month product, okay? But it's a product. And depending on our distribution of that, we can continue to build off of it. All right, so know where you're headed. Uh, lastly, I threw this in there, guys. It's never the leads that are gonna make you succeed. I just cannot stress that enough. There is no lead source out there that's gonna make you successful, okay? Too many people wanna find the easy way. If you think there's an easy way, you're, you're lying to yourself. Okay, you're totally lying to yourself. There's never going to be a lead source that you're gonna be able to uh, you know, obtain and it's just gonna change your world in, in this business. It doesn't exist. And if you do find it, again, please let me know because I'll be all over it. Because just like you, there's nothing I want more than qualified prospects that are waiting for me to call them and close them, okay? I can't tell you how many agents have said to me over the years, you know, if you give me people to sell, I'll sell them. <laughs> Why would I give them to you? <laughs> if I get people to sell, I'm gonna sell them myself. You know, you do realize I get a much higher margin when I close the deal versus you closing the deal, right? This is up to you to go find your customers, guys. That's what being an entrepreneur is about, all right? And we can give you the tools, all right? We can talk strategy with you. We can train you down to the specifics of every single policy that we have available for you to get appointed with, okay? But if you're not willing to do the work, then you're not gonna achieve anything, period, all right? So it's never the leads, always the man in the mirror. All right, guys, uh, that concludes uh, today's sales training. Um, I wanna thank you for taking the time out um, guys, if you need anything from us as it relates to our products, please don't hesitate to reach out and, um, we'll continue to do, you know, more of these live trainings. Uh, we'll get more, uh, specific, uh, with a lot of these other trainings when, you know, as far as the products and, and presenting of the products. But, but guys, if you take anything out of this training, take out, take this, all right. It's about the appointment. Okay, it's about the appointments. Get the appointments on the schedule, all right? And when you get these people to the appointment, they are a buyer, all right? And, and, and so focus on setting the appointments and you guys will start to see your numbers, uh, you know, your numbers do a lot better than if you're just chasing. All right, guys, have a great day, have a great weekend and uh, let us know where we can help you, all right? Thank you.